Hi, my dear Astro family. Today, I would like to talk to you about the Jupiter and North Node conjunction, which is taking place on three degree of Taurus, and it has not happened for a very long time when these two have met in the sign of uh, Taurus. The very last time it happened actually on 6th of May, 1929. We're going to speak about that a little bit later. Now, I would like just to make two short announcements. One of them is that this is probably the last call for my upcoming retreat, which is going to start in uh, three weeks' time. So if you are interested, check it out. You will be able to see a, a, a document on my website, which is going to give you a detailed description about what we will be talking about, how long it takes, the prices, and so forth. It's going to be a very exciting retreat all about relationship. And at the same time, I am running a promotion up to 40% on all my courses and webinars and 30% on all my readings. So if you would like to have a consultation or if you would like to learn from me, then you might want to check that out. And by the way, there is a very special promotion as well. You can have all my existing webinars, approximately about 78, and the remaining ones coming up uh, for one amount of money, which is £999, and you get a full access to all of them. So if that's something you would like, then check it out. It is also available on my website. Now, but let's get going with this uh, Jupiter North Node conjunction, which is only happening pretty rarely. It's going to be taking place on 1st of June in most uh, major time zones. And it is happening on 3 degree 37 minutes of the sign Taurus. Now, two reasons why this is a very interesting conjunction, by the way. One of them is because it is happening on the exalted degree of the moon. So the moon has got an exaltation on three degree. So that is exciting because exaltation kind of indicates that things are going to hype up significantly. But also we had a sun and north node conjunction uh, uh, happening on the 24th, 25th of April, and that happened on four degree of Taurus. So now we have got a Jupiter and the North Node conjunction happening here. So what does it tell us? First of all, uh, something might have been spotlighted for you somewhere uh, the second part of April, especially after the 21st of April, to be precise. And uh, you have got the opportunity now to do something with that, with Jupiter. Or you might become very optimistic about that, that it's going to play out in the greatest possible way and so forth. So you might want to be looking back what happened around 24th, 25th of April, because what happens is that Jupiter is the planet of magnifying glass. So, you know, for example, imagine that uh, you have lost some, you lost something around 24th of April. Uh, or, and then uh, Jupiter is the magnifying glass, so it's going to be able to help you to find it. Often, actually, it happens uh, just out of luck, out of the blue, for example. Now, I did look back what was going on in the world on, on that day. And uh, Japanese M1 spacecraft crashed on the moon uh, in its attempt to become the first privately owned spacecraft to land on the moon. So there might be some very similar attempts, for example, around the 1st of June as well. But also there were record uh, temperatures going on in Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, and so forth, uh, there were uh, something like 43 uh, degrees, Celsius degrees, so it was pretty hot. Now, I can testify that because I am in Thailand. It was extremely hot. So this could also indicate that the temperature is going to rise significantly, obviously, depending on where you are, uh, whether it's going to get extremely cold or it's going to get extremely hot, 
but it's very possible. Now, Jupiter is the planet of expansions, and now it is in an earthly sign, so which is in charge of abundance, money, uh, uh, any type of physical pleasure, basically. So Jupiter went into this sign on the May uh, on sixteenth of May, two thousand and twenty three. And then now it's going to be making this a unification with North Node. Now, North Node is associated with destiny. So wherever North Node is, on a mundane level, that is what we are meant to be working on to sort out, to move forward. Typically, there are some issues wherever the North Node are because we're going to have to learn about them. But the North Node is an insatiable hunger as well. So coming together with Jupiter, often we feel way too optimistic and so forth. Now, Jupiter uh, has got a 12-year cycle and North Node has got an 18.6-year cycle. Jupiter is regarded as one of the benefic planets. But to be true about this, you know, um, we are talking about a guest child, and I think it's a little bit overly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? So we we look at Jupiter as, oh, wow, it's always going to bring us great stuff. But that's not actually the entire truth behind it, because um, one thing is very important to mention that you know, Jupiter magnifies anything in our life. So when there is the crappy situations going on, it magnifies that as well. Uh, I just saw recently a, uh, you know, a post uh, someone did, and it said that old keys cannot open new doors. And I loved it. For me, this is a little bit the Jupiter North Node conjunction. Because if Jupiter is in conjunction to the North Node, it means that it is opposing the South Node. And the South Node would be the representation of the old door here, and Jupiter is the new key. So what it really means is that if we have got enough optimism going on, then we can actually open new possibilities for us. Now, it happens in the sign of Taurus, Taurus is about food, pleasure, strength, building, the earth itself, but also money, possessions, self-worth, something which makes you feel good. So there is an um, invitation here to uh, work on those fields of course, you might want to be looking at where it is falling in your own chart, what house, because the house is going to be the area of life where this growth could be happening. Um, and uh, the sign is just showing you kind of like the attitude you need to be portraying so that that growth can actually come around in your life. So to give you an example, let's say if it happens in your third house. So in order for you to uh, have, for example, a, uh, have for example, social media, uh, social media growth, you're gonna have to be optimistic, or you're gonna have to reach out to people with. Uh, um, uh, Jupiter being there, or you're going to have to publish something, right? So this is how you actually can uh, look at how these uh, growth uh, maybe uh, manifest in your life. But for me, Jupiter and North Node together is about your wishes can come true. But we do know that Taurus is a fixed sign. This is a very stubborn sign. Often Taurus does not see the forest from the tree. So you're going to have to open up your horizon. And this is exactly what Jupiter wants you to do here. Jupiter is Zeus, right? So it's the god of all the gods. 
So it talks about a divine opportunity. Um, it's just, it, it means that you're going to have to believe, you know, it can really bring some huge um, uh, fated event in your life because North Node represents not just the learning curves in our life, but it does represent fate as well. So often something happens which we cannot control, South Node in the sign of Scorpio, but eventually it plays out in the bestest way possible. And then uh, on top of that, it's going to be interesting that uh, early June as well, Venus will enter the sign of Leo as well. And Venus will be there till October because Venus will be uh, in retrograde period somewhere in July and August. So Venus will play a very significant uh, moment here, but I'm going to talk about that um, a little bit more anyway when we are looking at the, the uh, chart itself. So as I said, the sign where the North Node is located, uh, it always talks to us about what the society needs to resolve so that life can move forward. Now, by the way, Jupiter and North Node do meet every about seven, eight years. So the last time they had a conjunction was in 2016, sometimes in the summer. And the very next one is going to be 2030, um, uh, sometimes in November, beginning of December. So, but they do not meet always in the same sign. Actually, uh, they are always meeting almost in the next sign. So it's a very interesting uh, movement what they have. And Jupiter and North Node together for me is about uh, a real estate industry. I'm going to come on to that as well in a short while. So the very last time the North Node and Jupiter met in the sign of Taurus was 1929, May 6th. And the next time when it's going to be happening is just 2059, uh, middle of July. So I did look at what was going on in 1926, I mean, 1929, uh, because it might be giving us a little bit of an idea what to think or what we should expect. Well, you might remember, but unfortunately, that was the year when the Great Depression started. However, exactly around the date, we had Chile and Peru who signed the Treaty of Lima, finally resolving their border dispute from the War of the Pacific, which was taking place for, what, I think four or five years in uh, 1880s, somewhere there. And Chile keeps Arica and Peru regains Tacna. But also we had uh, on the 7th of June exactly when Vatican City became uh, a state. And also we had the first Academy Award, which, uh, which also happened on the day when Jupiter and North Node conjunction happened. So very, very interesting. And I'm really hoping that finally this Jupiter North Node conjunction will bring peace between Russia and Ukraine. And it's coming to a end. Now, uh, when the war started, by the way, I did direct a horary chart, which I also analyzed and posted on my YouTube channel. And uh, 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 some uh, people I remember believe that the war is not going to last longer than 10 days. Well, my horary chart mentioned 18 weeks or 18 months. So the 18 month is coming up sometimes this summer. And, um, you know, as I said, Venus will be retrograde in the sign of Leo. So I'm still hopeful that by the end of summer, there is going to be, uh, this war is going to end basically. But let's go back to the uh, <clears throat> Jupiter and uh, North Node uh, connections. So 
Now, obviously, what happened was that we had a Great Depression, the beginning of that. I mean, uh, the Great Depression pretty much started in September, but but the panic was uh, towards the end of the year, actually, sometimes in November, if I'm not mistaken. So firstly, on a mundane level, this is pretty much talking to us about, you know, for example, an inflation uh, or a decrease in inflation, but most likely there is going to be some shift happening around the inflation. Uh, Also, it could be some type of breakthrough, uh, for example, in creating something or maybe because there's going to be Uranus uh, flavor to it as well, which is only going to be happening in 2024 anyway. But uh, there is going to be some pre-launch of uh, something uh, money or, or food wise, most likely money wise. So there is a huge uh, cryptocurrency and so forth interest, I believe, with this conjunction. Uh, and most likely, I can also imagine that uh, there is going to be uh, like not pay rise, but the, maybe the national wages. Uh, will increase because the standard of living uh, is going to get improved and so forth in certain countries. I mean, especially where there are some uh, elections going on, I'm guessing. So uh, you might want to be looking at that too. Mm -hmm. Uh, And most likely there might be some news, for example, about uh, the artificial intelligence as well. Um, Now, the reason why I think that is because even though this conjunction takes place on in the sign of Taurus, but it's the second word, which is a Gemini one. So there is kind of like the stability of social media, the stability of communicational channels, and uh, artificial intelligence is a little bit of an Aquarius character, of course. Um... And there is Uranus there too. But as I said, this uh, Uranus-Jupiter conjunction only going to be taking place next year in May anyway. But on a personal level, this is giving you the opportunity to make more money. You might feel a little bit more empowered uh, to make more money, uh, but you might be running into some type of challenges though. Because... Jupiter and Pluto are still squaring. So therefore, uh, the North Node is a part of it too, right? So Pluto is in the sign of Aquarius, which can represent people. So we are coming up, let's say, on a mundane level with a new pay of, a new way of paying, for example, but then the people are against it. So that's a possibility as well. Um, yes, on top of that, it is telling you that you might be given some great opportunities for growth when it comes to your life purpose. So it's the sudden realization in what ways you want to create stability for yourself. You become optimistic about it. These new opportunities actually might be coming from uh, relationships. So you get a new job that is going to be shown uh, by the house position where it takes place. Now, remember that with Jupiter, we do need to grab the opportunities, right? Uh, Because if we just let it pass by, it's not going to be bringing us good outcomes so important now uh, I I do not wish to talk uh, about the Jupiter and Pluto square much because uh, because I did make a video about that so you might want to be checking that out on the negative side Jupiter and uh, North Node conjunction can also create some some restlessness or some type of uncertainty within people, or 
you know, your unhealthy attachments towards your possessions as well as power. Now, that's how Pluto might be playing out in the game. A little bit of a power struggle there, too. So it's possible. Now, um, I looked at the chart, and then what we see in the chart is, uh, in that uh, uh, conjunction chart, that Moon is with the South Node. Now, Moon is separating from it, though, but uh, unfortunately, it is with the South Node. So again, this is kind of showing me that the whatever that new stuff, which is coming up with uh, uh, Jupiter and North Node conjunction, the people are against it because Moon is actually the people. But on an emotional level, it could just talk to you about that there is a new opportunity which gets presented to you and the moon is extremely scared in the sign of Scorpio. Uh, we do not want to let go of our emotional securities uh, because I don't know, I need to pay the bills and all those type of things. So there is a slightly bit of it, but it is a separating one. Okay, so separating one often indicates that the past opportunity uh, comes back again, uh, and I don't know what to do with that. Now, the dispositor of um, this conjunction is Venus, which is still in the sign of Cancer. So on 25 degree, by the way. So this could really talk to you about... Um, um, some type of um, um, real estate industry. So what I'm going to see here is most likely that there might be some financial opportunities when it comes to real estate industry. So it could talk to you about the crash of the real estate industry, or actually it could talk to you about the, the prices will go up significantly. Now, why am I so cryptic? On one hand, because Jupiter and North Node is pretty much a, an increasing energy, okay? But there is Pluto still in play, and we have got this ongoing uh, T-square or even a Grand Cross, pretty much. So it can really go two ways. Also, I feel like that, uh, for example, when it comes to the financial world, uh, there is going to be ways of how people are going to be rectifying, for example, a cryptocurrency situation. So whether they're going to put some asset in it or they're going to make a statement, for example, you know, kind of like to boost the price of it. Uh, I can imagine, but then that would be an indication to me that later on it's going to have some type of issues. Now, also the other thing is that Venus is actually starting a mystic rectangle uh, configuration uh, with uh, Neptune, Pluto, and Ceres. So... Now, this is going to be happening almost a week before when it starts. What it means is that they're going to be within aspects, but it's only going to be peaking on the 3rd of June, and then it's going to last for about 10 days afterwards. So whether you've heard of a mystic rectangle before or not, but mystic rectangle is on one hand is definitely about spirituality there is a, the word there uh mystic right so there is a little bit of a mysticism a little bit of a secret involved here uh, uh the mystic rectangle has got two oppositions going on and then we have got basically six aspects happening here so we've got two sextiles, two trines, and then two oppositions. So on one hand, surely, what it pretty much talked to us about, that there are challenges, but at the same time, there are some type of um, um, uh, opportunities as well. 
So any type of challenges and difficulties always what come with an opportunity to start something new. Um, obviously, the tension is always between the oppositions. And then the sex tires are the ones which are actually somehow calming it down, or that is showing us the opportunity. So firstly, what you're going to see, for example, in this aspect pattern is that we have got the Venus and Pluto opposition and sorry, the Venus and uh, yeah Pluto opposition, which is going to be taking place as soon as Venus moves into the sign of Leo. So in one way, how I can imagine that is that someone is not liking, for example, that the real estate market is going up or uh, I don't know, the, the Ethereum is going up. So they are going to be making some type of uh, kind of like bad talks, for example, to bring it down. Now, I did mention Ethereum because I do believe that this is going to be a period of time when Ethereum is going to go up, actually. So that is one of the reasons. And I kind of believe that the Bitcoin is going to be struggling during this period of time with its own price as well. Uh, uh, the Mystic Rectangle on a, on a personal level, this is a little bit um an unsettled feeling what it talks about and at the same time as i said there is the need to recognize that every single challenge is actually come with some opportunities to um to to grasp basically now going back to this um uh, a little bit more. So what we see here is definitely it talks about money overall, because we have got Venus, Neptune, Pluto, and Ceres involved. Now, Venus and Ceres are uh, pretty much about uh, basically a little bit of growth. These are very fertile type of energies, especially because Venus is still in the sign of Cancer. So again, it talks about opportunity. Pluto is the planet of wealth, and Neptune is the higher octave of Venus. So Neptune also can uh, signify money as well. But typically with Neptune, this is the money which is a little bit kind of like uncensored or, you know, which is kind of like a little bit hidden. But overall, this is surely talking to us about uh food industry home environment or something to do with harvesting as well pluto is the planet of wealth and power and then neptune is there to kind of unfortunately blur things a little bit or to have better clearer vision about our own finances so there is a lot of or neptune wants to heal it that's a possibility as well. So I feel like the financial market is going to start healing uh, slightly bit. That's what I, I believe. Of course, there is a lot of um, artistic ability involved here as well. By the way, with these, but... I do not think that's um, the possibility here this time around. Oh, guys, this is the uh, Jupiter and North Node conjunction for you. Uh, if you like the video, then please press like and then subscribe to the channel as well. It would be lovely to have uh, a lot more of you and just to share my knowledge as much as possible with you. Um, if you have got any questions, then basically just drop it into the comment box below and I will be able to talk to you about that a lot more. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.